Hello, my dear friends. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing L1 visa with O1 visa. Explain all the pluses and minuses, advantages, disadvantages of these both visas to make sure that you make the right choice. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case. Let's go. All right, I know you guys were asking me about uh, this topic for a long time. So I'm answering your prayers and doing this content right now. So please, smash that like button because I'm bringing you the best content that you can find here on YouTube for your immigration purposes. Why are we comparing seemingly uncomparable, <laughs> okay? Because L1 visa is an intercompany transfer from one business outside of the States to the business in the States to scale, to grow, and to control the American company. And O1 visa is a visa for talented persons. Apparently, these two visas have nothing in common. Yes, unless you specialize in those visas, unless you do them every day. And only then you can tell that a bunch of similarities or even uh, one could be a better option of the other. So let's talk about them. And you guys know me, I like to give you a focused information. I don't like to go for a long time. I'm just like, okay, here, here's the decision basically. When I talk about L1 visa, I like to analyze it not from the beginning, like, okay, you gotta have a company with 15 employees and you control them, blah, blah. Yes, you, you need that. Please watch this video where I give you the basics for L1 visa. I'm not gonna go into much detail for that. Uh, the only detail I'm going to discuss is that the manner how you're going to be transferred to the U.S. It's either an existing U.S. company that's affiliated with a non-U.S. company or it could be a startup business. Startup business is very important. We're going to focus on that because O1 visa allows you to come to the States for the startup business as well. L1 visa for the startup when you actually come to the States and start a new idea, a new business plan from a fresh, okay? Fresh start. And the USCIS gives you one year after you arrive to show the result. So what that result has to be? At least five employees under your control in your US business, okay? So it's you and five people. And among these five people, you have to have one or two managers. So it's you at the top, one or two managers, and then people who do the operational and administrative work. If in your mind, your business idea does not require that many people at the end of year one of your development, that means that L1 visa is not for you. That's the beginning of the inquiry, because if you cannot get L1 visa, what are the options you have for business immigration? Well, you need to look at E2, but if you don't have the proper passport, like a European passport or some other country that signed the treaty with the US, then E2 is out of the picture. EB5, not everybody has $800,000 and maybe even a million dollars depending where your business is going to be located. So this is a lot of budget and not a lot of people have access to this. So what's left? Almost nothing. And I'm not going to be talking about H-1B when you need to have an employer and other employment-based visas where you have to have some company in the States sponsoring you, like bringing you to the States. I'm not going to discuss that because we're businessmen, okay? We are entrepreneurs. We want to come and control our own businesses. So what other options we have? And that other option, and probably the only option, to be, to be honest with you, is O-1 visa. And you will be like, well, Stanislav, that's not what I heard about O-1 visa. That O-1 visa is for talented people who have a lot of recognition, maybe international, 
and we gotta have the employer here in the US. And so let me address both of these issues one by one. Let's start with the employer. Didn't you know? If you didn't, you probably don't watch my videos, all right? So smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I give you the secrets and insights that other attorneys don't. And they don't do this not because they don't want it, just because some of them don't know them. Don't want and don't know two different things. And some of them just don't, they know, but they don't feel like it. So, and I'm not that attorney. I want to make sure that you know as much as possible upfront. For O1 visa, the law is pretty clear that you can be the owner of the company for O1 visa for the purposes of sponsoring yourself. Let me rephrase it. You can register a company in the US and that same company can petition you as employee. So you are an employer and you are an employee at the same time. Yes, you have to structure that company properly. It has to be a bona fide company, meaning that it's real and you really intend to do business uh, on that company, not just use it to come to the States, all right? That's fraud and we don't do any fraud. And that resolves a lot of problems for the startups, IT people, investors, and business people just in general. So your own company can sponsor you. Now, your international recognition, your talents, and I know that USCIS website says, you gotta have a Grammy award or Nobel prize. And yeah, right, uh, definitely. And they want you to have a Grammy award or Nobel prize. They will have no problem to approve you for O1 and even EB1A, the green card. But from my experience of doing these visas for over eight years in my corporation and the entire team is focused on those type of visas, I tell you for a fact that the depth of the evidence for O1 visa is very, very low, especially when you compare it to EB1A, the green card for the talent, all right? Then yes, you have to, you gotta do a lot, yes? O1 is much easier. Show me the uh, some good company or your own company that you worked, that reputation for that company. Show me that you make good money. Show me that you maybe contributed something in the field, that you did something that is uh, playing a role in your in your industry, in your niche. Maybe you have a, you've been a judge in the competition. Maybe you won some competitions. Press writing about you. Either you already have or you will have. I can tell you that with a 99% certainty. And also some uh, articles of your own. I want them scientific articles, this is the best. Uh, or at least expert articles that you, that you wrote, you authored. Five criteria is a good recipe for me to get you approved for O1 visa. And most of you have two or three right now. And it's possible for the time when you work on your petition for five months, when we collect the evidentiary base for your visa, to work on others, let's say press and uh, scientific publications, okay? Uh, and we need at least three criteria to satisfy the O1 visa requirements, but we want to do like five because, you know, the more the better and we're more flexible with uh, things moving around. So O1 visa is not as scary and unknown as you might have thought. Actually, in my company, we have about 98% approval rate for O1 visa. So basically, we get approval for almost every O1 visa that we file. Why? Well, because we have a team, we have the process, the strategy, all the resources, the PR agencies we work with, and things like that. That's what O1 visa, when we compare it to L1, uh, O1, we gotta show the uh, achievements and recognition. L1, we need to show that we will be controlling and directing people in the future. And if we get to that future and there are no people to control or number is low, we will not get an extension. If you have no business outside of the US, you just work for someone, then at right off the bat, L1 is not for you. Or even if you do have the business, and even if you, if you have 15 employees in that company or more, and you direct and control, but your business ID does not encompass at least five people at the end of year one of your L1 approval, and eight people at the end of year three, then L1 is not for you. And if you don't have a lot of money, 
or uh, the proper passport, which also requires uh, a significant investment of at least $100,000, that's E2 visa, then your only option is O1. And guys, I know that I titled this uh, uh, video as uh, L1 versus O1. Actually, it's not the proper way to do this. It's rather alternative to L1 or other businesses visa in a way of uh, O1 visa. Okay, and O1 is one of the categories is a business person. Okay, businessman, business. So your achievements in business, and the more you have, the better. I gave you like the bare minimum with which we can get an approval. Of course, there could be more. You can have uh, awards. You may be a member of the association for professionals. Maybe you go to the conferences. Maybe you have a patent and things like that. That's gonna make it stronger. But I gave you the bare basic. Okay, so you, so you know that. Okay, even those type of achievements get approval for O1. Now, the difference between switching from L1 and O1 to the green cards, and here we have L1 to EB1C, that's the classic way, and O1 to EB1A. So those are the non-immigrant versions uh, and immigrant versions of uh, the non-immigrant visas. And uh, for uh, switching from L1 to EB1C, you need to scale your business and grow it here in the States. Have your foreign business uh, uh, running at the same time. Uh, and when you get to eight people in your company uh, con that you control and two or three managers between you and the rest of the people, we can get you the green card on EB1C. With O1 to EB1A, we need to get more recognition and more achievements uh, uh, on top of what you had. If we had uh, five criteria for O1, I want six for EB1A and more for each criterion. Let's say uh, you had uh, three uh, articles in press about you. Now I want four, five. You had three uh, uh, scientific publications. Now I, ha I want four or five. You had only one competition judging other professionals. I want two and so on, okay? So I just want uh, a little bit more uh, criteria and more in depth of each criteria, okay? And by the way, because L1 goes to EB1C and O1 goes to EB1A, it doesn't mean that we cannot go like this, across visas, let's call it this way. So O1 can go to EB1C, so you can scale your business on O1, grow it, and if you have uh, the company outside of the US affiliated, so it's common control for both companies, you can go to EB1C if you don't want to uh, grow your, your achievements, your recognition. And L1 can become EB1A if you start getting recognition as a business person, as a, as a, a top manager, okay? So don't be limited to only one option for each visa. All other options are available. I, I give you the a classic way uh, and I give you the alternative ways, all right? And there are more other alternatives. Uh, definitely L1 visa is a great way to, uh, to come to the States. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying that L1 is not for you. It's not for you only if you do not uh, uh, satisfy the criteria. If you do, of course, you will, will be doing L1 because uh, it requires less contribution in the beginning, but more as you go, okay? Because you need to grow and scale your business. There, is, there are limitations on you. But O1 is a healthy alternative to L1 visa, even if you think that you are not a talented person, okay? Now, I have a free service in my company. It's called a free evaluation. What's that? Go down below this video and you find two links. One is gonna say uh, business visas, one is gonna say talent visas. Encourage, you do both. So you click on them and you answer all the questions in the form, okay? And within 48 hours, I'm gonna analyze your answers and get back to you and say, hey, John, hey, Juan, hey, my dear friend, Julia, you have this, this and that, you satisfy this criteria, you don't satisfy those criteria, and uh, I see this visa or that visa is good for you, and I see the potential. And if I do see the potential in your case, then I will invite you to the complex immigration planning where I will build the initial written strategy for your case, be it L1, O1, or maybe even some other visa. Smash the like button if you like the content of my YouTube channel. Subscribe to it because I release at least two videos a week with a really good 
content. Also, I have Instagram, I have Facebook, I have Twitter, I have TikTok. So make sure you subscribe to those and follow me because I post unique and separate content on those platforms. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.